Okay, so what we'll do is, before we look at um, the components of the nervous system, we'll just look at how the nervous system is arranged. Okay, so if we're thinking about the nervous system, we're thinking about all the neurons inside your body that allow communication and coordination between the different parts of the body, muscles, brain to muscles, um, uh, central nervous system to end endocrine glands and so on okay so the nervous system is basically everything the nervous system is divided into two parts first is the central nervous system which it, it includes the brain and the spinal cord and then you've got the peripheral nervous system so the central nervous system is the brain and the spinal cord but the peripheral nervous system is essentially every, all the neurons that um, allow communication between the different parts of the body and the central nervous system. So I would like us to be thinking about these, the, it's the peripheral nervous system that allows information to go to the nervous, uh, to the central nervous system and back from the nervous, uh, central nervous system to the uh, muscles, glands, skin, uh, other receptors and so on but it's a central nervous system, this is where the information is going to initially and then going back out from to make a response. Okay, so you've got your peripheral nervous system that comprises essentially your sensory neurons and your effector neurons, roughly speaking. You need your sensory neurons to take information from the sensors to the central nervous system. You need your effector neurons to take the information then or impulses from the central nervous system once the decision has been made back out to any effectors that are needed to make the response. But the central nervous system is kind of the, the processing center. So information needs to go to the central nervous system, information needs to go out from the central nervous system and it's the peripheral nervous system that has that job. Okay. Now, the peripheral nervous system is itself divided into two parts. So it has a part of it that, so the, the things that you control voluntarily is called the somatic nervous system. So these are the things that are under conscious control. That's the somatic nervous system. Things like your skeletal muscles, um, essentially that's all that you are in control of. Um, skeletal muscles is under the somatic nervous system. But then you also have things that are involuntarily controlled and that forms the autonomic nervous system. So you don't consciously control these aspects of your body, but they do get controlled by other mechanisms, and this is more to do with what we are talking about. So the autonomic nervous system, so things that need to be controlled, things like heart rate, digestive system, vasoconstriction, vasodilation, things like that, not under conscious control. But what I would like you to remember to think about is that it is in terms of that positive and negative. Sometimes you need to control something to make it go higher. Sometimes you need to control things to make it go lower. So the autonomic nervous system itself is divided into two branches. Um, one which we'll call the sympathetic branch. So it doesn't always fall as cleanly as this, but sympathetic, generally speaking, to kind of increase things and the other branch which is to do the opposite and that is called the parasympathetic okay so anything that needs to be controlled in a kind of increasing or decreasing way involuntarily is the autonomic nervous system so that's the general organization remember it's neurons at the end of the day that's allowing all of this communication regulation to happen so the next thing we'll do is to kind of make a little bit more sense of this is to look at a basic response and how the body makes a, a response to some information that it gets from the environment 
essentially that is the reflex arc and we'll look at how neurons allow the reflex arc to work. <laughs>